My name is Dr. Paul Letter, and today I'm here to talk to you about sports training. Yes, vision seems to be an obvious parameter in dealing with sports. As I say to the children when they come to the office, you're not watching the ball with your teeth. The way your eyes have to track the ball and where it is in space, the ability for both eyes to tell you where the ball is in terms of depth, two eyes pointing at one object from two points of view tells you where you are in relationship to that object and where that object is in relationship to you. But most importantly in recent news history was the fact that Larry Fitzgerald, most important player in the Super Bowl a year or two ago, was, it was so moved by the vision therapy he had as a child with his uncle here in Chicago that he realized that as he hit the football field that he had learned as much from that visual therapy experience as a child as he had, as he said, on the field itself. So I think what we learn from vision therapy, what we learn from vision, is it can be directed specifically at an individual's needs, visual skill needs, a cause and effect between the evaluation and what is addressed. The specific visual needs of that individual sport and what the parameters are of that sport and what are required. Let me give you an example of some of the issues and, and tell you how Larry Fitzgerald has now become the national spokesman for vision therapy because of his early experiences with academic problems in school and its ability to enhance his sports abilities. I think what we see is that we use a number of different things that help an individual. The ability to improve tracking and make you aware of more of your eyes on the ball. The ability to be able to use eyes together to predict where the ball is in space and where you are in relationship to it and to train and improve the just noticeable differences of observations perceptually. The ability to predict time and space. The ability to use strobe lights at 50% of the value of seeing. 20 minutes of that and the ball appears to move slower because it is predicting time and space training. The ability to be aware of your central vision and your peripheral vision at the same time so that you're aware of not only keeping around the ball but who's coming in to steal the ball from you and the ability to use imagery and visualization where you can get as much practice as imaging your hitting imaging your swing in golf as you can actually practicing the motor memory experiences are involved with a perceptual phenomenon where vision can be the one place to create simultaneously visual perceptual processing that lets you rehearse those moves in your head without the act of actually doing it. That becomes the rehearsal for downhill skiers. That becomes the rehearsal for tennis players so that they can practice their swing before their first swing is done. Now, I think one of the most moving things isn't just the way that vision therapy is tailored to those needs. What moreover is important is so many of the children I see with vision related learning problems where sports is one of the things that makes their ears stand up. When you talk about that, when you talk about reading, their ears seem to come down. It's a way to bridge an understanding of vision training, of their visual system, of perception, of processing, has a direct relationship to their performance in school and was what may have given them so much grief as they went through the grades and found that smaller print created problems for them that they never had in earlier grades. This is what I do. This is why I find this field so interesting. This is why sports vision is so important for not only those in sports, but those who are having difficulty with sports who have found that that too has caused them to lose self-esteem and not understand how capable and talented they really are.